namaste. That's where we begin. Namaste, meaning the divine within me, salutes the divine within you and within all things. And yoga is a journey to reconnect with the divine. In fact, to integrate with it, to become one. The chakra system is a pathway for connecting to the divine and bringing it down inside your body. So going to the divine, allowing the divine to come into you, doing your practice to reach up to the divine, to transcend your boundaries and your limitations, to connect with the divine, is what this journey through the chakras is all about. Hi, I'm Anadea Judith, and I am your host for this video series. I've been working with the chakras all my life. It's been my life's work, and I'm so delighted to share with you what I've learned over the last 45 years of teaching and writing about the chakras, teaching yoga, doing psychology, being a therapist, traveling all over the globe with my workshops, and I'm just so excited to be sharing with you this information. So the chakra system has been my life's work ever since the early 70s when I discovered the word. A shot of energy went through me, and since then I've written books and taught yoga and psychology workshops all over the globe, and I've learned a lot. It's worked me, it's going to work you, and I'm just delighted to be bringing this information to you who are studying to become yoga teachers. So why the chakras? The chakras are taking the world by storm right now. And why is this system grabbing hold of the collective imagination at this time in the world when this is an ancient system from the yoga tradition? So I believe it's because we need a map for the journey. We are all on a path and we have studied this path and that path, but what is the map? to that journey. The chakra system maps on to the architecture of the soul. Now, as yoga teachers, you are studying anatomy and physiology, how the bones and the muscles connect and the ligaments and the organs. That's very important. That's the anatomy of the body. But the chakras are like the anatomy of the soul, the architecture. Think of them as organs in the energetic body. And as a whole system, they're not only a map, but they are also a seven-leveled, deeply profound philosophical system that guides us in our personal growth and our spiritual growth and guides humanity as a way to connect heaven and earth through the core of each and every one of us. So we need a system that integrates mind and body and also includes our psychology. So we have spirit, we have mind, we have our psyche, we have our energy body, we have our physical body, and the chakras unites all of it in a very logical and practical step-by-step -step system that shows you how to get from here to there. So together, the seven chakras describe what I call a rainbow bridge. It's the modern interpretation that assigns the rainbow colors, but if you look at that, that's a bridge between heaven and earth. And I've studied a lot of mythology, and there's many myths that say, as doomsday approaches, the rainbow bridge will break down. Heaven and earth will no longer be connected. So the reason this has been my life's work is because I believe that if we restore the rainbow bridge inside each person, so that heaven and earth are connected within us, it also means mind and body, spirit and matter, inside and outside. We are integrating through this profound formula for wholeness in a holistic system. And that rainbow bridge maybe can avert doomsday by bringing heaven and earth into connection once again. And in this way, the chakras describe the full spectrum of human possibility all the way from our physical bodies, to our emotions, to our energy body, to our relationships, our communication, our imagination, our light body, and the consciousness that connects it all. So it addresses all the major aspects on this beautiful continuum. It puts everything in a context. And as you teach yoga, 
you'll find that various postures have a context of, oh, this will ignite your third chakra, or this opens the heart and softens the shoulders so the breath can come in better, or this is really grounding. So a posture you might have done many, many times, now it has a context of what you're doing in that posture. So let's go to a definition of the chakras, something we can work with. I mean, we all know them as energy centers. That's kind of the common thing, but what's energy? What is the center? What do they do? So if we consider the architecture of the soul, then the, the body is your temple. And inside that temple, you can say you have seven major chambers in the temple. And each one is a center of organization for receiving energy, for assimilating that life force energy, for storing it, and for expressing it. So let me give you an example. In your house, you have a kitchen. That's where you bring in food. That's where you assimilate and cook the food, put things away in your cupboards. You might store something there. You have your staples that you store, and then you bring it all together to make dinner and you serve it. So we also take in breath. We assimilate that breath as the heart beats the oxygen into every cell of our body. You can hold your breath and you can store it. You can build up charge through doing pranayama and bandhas. And you also exhale and you express that. You're taking in information right now. You're assimilating it into your own language. You might be making notes in which you're storing it. And then when you become a teacher, you'll be sharing some of this information. So each of the chakras does these four functions. So receiving, assimilating, storing, and expressing. And they do them on different levels, on the level of earth energy. That would be your food that you eat, you assimilate. If you eat too much, you store it and you burn it up in activity. And it could be emotions. You feel emotions, you take them in. How do you assimilate your emotions? Maybe you store old emotions and you express them and our action and our love. And we can apply this to each and every chakra. But those four functions need to have balance. If you receive more than you let go of, it's like taking more in breath. After a while, you can't take any in. You're out of balance. You have to let it out. And if you're giving out more than you're taking in, it's like exhaling, ha, ha, ha then you get depleted. You have to stop and regenerate and take in. Or if you take in too much, then you store it too much. Or maybe you can't assimilate it so you don't know how to store it. So all these functions need to be balanced in each of the chakras. So where do the system of chakras come from? We know it comes from yoga philosophy. And as yoga teachers, it's essential that we study the chakras. But Many people say, oh, they're so ancient, they go back 4,000 years or so, and that's not really necessarily proven, at least in the system that we use today. What comes to us of the seven chakras, or even some texts say there's only six coming up to here, is from the tantric period of yoga philosophy. And tantra actually means weaving or a loom in which you take a cord this way and that way and this way and that way, and then you take another thread and you go over, under, over, under, and you weave a cloth. Well, the tantric doctrines were weavings of many of the traditions of yoga. And instead of just being something that tries to go up to the mind alone or to the spirit or escape the body, the tantric said, no, we weave that in with the body. We use everything when we weave it together. And that weaving creates the fabric of reality. And so if you don't take a thread all the way over to this side, and you only go here and part way, well, your fabric is going to fray. It's going to come apart. And if we look at the fabric of the world today, we can see that many parts are fraying because we have an unequal balance between mind and body between spirit and matter. We say that we have to leave the body to become spiritual. We have to leave the earth, like there's something wrong with it. It's dirty, it's low. But my understanding of the chakras is that it's an integrative model that says, yes, we bring spirit into the body. We bring spirit down to earth. And from there, yes, we can take the step-by-step -step 
road to higher consciousness. But it's not about leaving to do that. It's about integrating. So we're always working with polarities, weaving them together, stretching out, coming in, lifting up, bending in, hugging into the core, extending out to the side. These are ways that we move energy. And we're going to learn more about that in the second chakra when we work with polarities. Now I'd like to show you a quick exercise so you can feel the chakras in your hands. And it uses this principle of polarity. So take your hands out, one hand up and one hand down, straight in front of you. That's working with polarity. And then open and close your palms rapidly. And that means all the way open, all the way closed. And breathe. And then turn your hands over the other way, all the way open, all the way closed. We don't want to just do that. We want to all the way open until your hands feel a little bit tired. And then take them apart and slowly bring them together. And as you come to about here with your hands, you may feel a subtle, spongy field of energy. Sort of like a magnetic field when you were a kid and played with ma magnets. And you might even feel a little tingling in your hands. That's what it feels like to open your hand chakras. What did we do? We opened and closed, opened and closed, opened and closed. And that stimulated it. Well, we don't have a lot of blockages in our hands, so they're really easy to open. But when it comes to yoga, we're doing largely the same thing. We're opening on the in-breath, we're stretching out, we're lifting up. And then maybe we bow forward on the out breath, we're closing, we're opening. The breath does that at every in and out breath, squeezing and contracting, squeezing and contracting. Bum, 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 bum. This is the, the fluctuation of the universe. In yoga, it's called spanda. It's the stretching and contracting. And so that stimulates energy and it moves it through the core of the body where the chakras are located. So where are the chakras? It's really their location in the body and the associated element that gives this whole body of meaning that we have given it in the modern age. And where they are in the body has to do with different functions of the body. For instance, the heart is close to the lungs. That's why it's the element air. The throat is where we communicate. This is about sound and vibration. The earth is our bones and muscles, our solid body, that's first chakra. But the chakras align along the core of the body. Now some people say they're in the spine. I don't personally believe that. If you look at a map of the human nervous system from the side, you see that we have the spine in its shape that we all know, and we have nerve ganglia branching out from the spinal column at each of the levels of the chakras, with the cerebral cortex being the crown chakra. And so those nerve ganglia are coming forward from the spine. So that's really more in the core of the body. Your spine is right to your back. And so in the core of the body, that's where we want to find our alignment between heaven and earth. The simplest way to do that is send your roots down, press your sitting bones down into wherever you're sitting, the cushion, the floor, the mat, lift up your crown. And then like a necklace of jewels, when you pull the two ends apart, each of the jewels lines up. So when I pull my crown up and my root down, the chakras begin to move into alignment. So we always want to accentuate the core of the body that that's where we live. I think of that as the capital letter I. So we see that the way we used to make it in third grade, a long, tall, straight line with a little hat at the top, a little foot at the bottom, and that is the I. I am in here. You are in there. That I is the namaste that we salute to ourselves and each other. And when we're doing that, when we align with the core, even prayer position, aligns with our core, reminds us of that. That's who we are. That's where the rainbow bridge is. And that's where each of the jewels of the chakras resides. So as we line up the chakras from base to crown along this vertical core, 
You can imagine that we have two main currents of energy, one that runs upward from the base to the crown, which I call the current of liberation. In the old text, it's called mukti, which means freedom. And in that, we go from the element earth that is very fixed. This couch is probably going to be in this shape. It's not going to change size. The floor is holding me to water, which is a little more fluid, to fire, which is energetic, but doesn't really have any boundaries, to air, which is invisible, to sound, which is a vibration that spreads far and wide, to light that can be transmitted from a distant galaxy, to consciousness that has no material substance and is everywhere. So as we move up, we liberate, we get freer and freer and more expansive with each step. But there is an equally powerful force that comes down. It starts in consciousness, starts with awareness, From that awareness, we imagine, we visualize. Then we bring it into words. We talk about it. We talk about it in relationship to a person. We do things. We take action. We move things forward in our lives. And then we bring it all the way down into the manifested plane. And as we take those elements in reverse order, we condense them. What we visualize is a little more specific than our random thoughts. And what I talk about is a little more specific than what I see. And when I bring it into relationship, it becomes even more condensed until we condense something all the way into its manifested form. So that's the current of manifestation. In the old text, it was called bukti, which means enjoyment. It's how we enjoy the world. The tantric said it's not about rejecting the world, it's about fully embodying and engaging with the world and using the body in that engagement as a vehicle for our liberation. So these two currents can be connected with the Hindu deities Shiva or Shiva, who is pure consciousness in yoga connected with Purusha, just pure awareness, and Shiva comes down into the body to meet his lover, Shakti. Shakti is the primordial energy that is in everything. It's the life force. Her full name, Kundalini Shakti, is coiled Shakti, and that is the serpent power that lies, theoretically, coiled three and a half times around the base chakra, and then when awakened, rises up. So Shakti is rising up to meet her lover, Shiva, and Shiva is moving down to embrace Chakti. And you can imagine as they meet in each of these chambers in the temple of the body, they do different things. Oh, they have great imagination together. They have great conversation. They come into the heart where they have their eternal love affair. They come into the second chakra and, well, we might close the door and give them some privacy. So at each of the chakras, they are integrating. And from that, We express, we do the four functions we talked about earlier. We receive horizontally, we assimilate, we take it in, and we express. But we're always mixing together the liberating and the manifesting current. And we're always bringing Shiva down. His consciousness brings order, form, and Shakti rises. She energizes that. So we honor these deities that represent so much for us as we work with the chakras. So that gives you a very brief overview of the chakras as a whole. In the next video, we'll start with the first chakra, and we'll talk a little bit more about how the chakras can be excessive or deficient, and we will begin our training.